Welcome to the Nokia Theater at LA Live. Tonight, Access TV goes up close with NBA legend Kobe Bryant and Emmy Award winning host Jimmy Kimmel. All proceeds from tonight's event support the Kobe and Vanessa Bryant Family Foundation and Cedar Sinai Sports Spectacular in their efforts to eliminate homelessness throughout Los Angeles. Please welcome our special guest, Mr. Kobe Bryant, and our host for the evening, Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, yeah. Throw just a little bit of a jib. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's not weird. Well, look at this. Thank you. How about that? You don't even have to play. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming. This is Kobe Bryant. He plays for the Lakers. <laughs> Well, thank you. Have a seat, thank Kobe. You. Thank you. You guys have a seat, too. Well, first of all, it's a miracle. You're walking, you're, you're up on your feet. I mean, it's incredible. I feel, I feel good. I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you do feel good. I feel, I feel great, actually. It's, um, I've, been, I've been pretty fortunate with the surgery. It's been good, moving can you, around. Can you hear Kobe okay? Can you hear me now? <laughs> that sounds better. I'll translate if there's any trouble. I, well, I saw you on Instagram picking up marbles with your toes, so yeah. that has to be a good sign, right? Yeah, I mean, you know what? This, I'm just going to like just sit here like this. And, yeah, yeah you're I, right. I, I, I struggle picking up marbles with my toes, but you know, whatever the great Judy Cito tells me to do, I listen, and it's going to get my foot better and get me ready to win a 6 one. So. Well, I want to start off um, by um, reading something that you wrote right after you were injured. You went on Facebook, and yeah. you posted a lengthy blog. Yeah. Yeah. You know what this is? Oh, yeah. You said this. You going to read the whole thing? No, I'm going to read some of it. This is such BS. All the training and sacrifice just flew out the window with one step that I've done millions of times. The frustration is unbearable. The anger is rage. Why the hell did this happen? Makes no damn sense. Now I'm supposed to come back from this and be the same player or better at 35? How in the world am I supposed to do that? I have no clue. Do I have the consistent will to overcome this thing? Maybe I should break out the rocking chair and reminisce on the career that was. Maybe this is how my book ends. Yeah. Maybe Father Time has defeated me. Then again, maybe not. It's 3.30 a.m., my foot feels like dead weight, my head is spinning from the pain meds, and I'm wide awake. Forgive my venting, but what's the purpose of social media if I won't bring it to you real, no image? Feels good to vent, to let it out. To feel as if this is the worst thing ever. Because after all the venting, the real perspective sets in. Uh, there are far greater issues and challenges in the world than a torn Achilles. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Find the silver lining and get to work with the same belief, same drive, and same conviction as ever. One day, the beginning of a new career journey will commence. Today is not that day. If you see me in a fight with a bear, pray for the bear. <laughs> I've always loved that quote. That's Mamba mentality. We don't quit, we don't cower, we don't run, we endure and conquer. So, you're kind of going back. First of all, they must have had you on some great drugs when you wrote that. Yeah. Man, you know, that's it's, uh, it's that good old Vicodin, I guess. Vicodin, yes. And when does anybody uh, consult you before you tweet when you're on Vicodin? No, no, I, you know, I called them, uh, you know, sometimes you just, just let Run it out, Run things man. by just, people? Well, I mean, that, that post right there was just, uh, you know, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep. I mean, I was up and just thinking about everything. It's just, you know, I had Vanessa to let it so out, man. so lucky you have Facebook to talk to instead of her <laughs> in the middle of the oh, night. She's, you know, she's heard it, she's heard it before, man. She's heard you, it before. Uh, this is your 18th season. Do you think you played too many minutes last season? Um... You know, I, I can't say that I did. I, I think... I think he did. Yeah, I mean, with, the, with an Achilles injury, you, it's just one of those freak situations. I mean, it's tough to really understand. I know when that threshold is. And when, right. 
right. you know, when enough is enough. I mean, it's, it's tough. Right. That may not have been, well, probably wasn't the reason for the injury, but you got Tim Duncan playing 10 minutes a game less than you're playing. You're in your 18th year. Do you think next season you will play less? You'll be more conservative? Well, I mean, that's the that's the goal. You know, that's why we, uh, you know, we went out. We, we got a little younger. We picked up, you know, a couple uh, a couple wing players who I really think are going to, you know, help us tremendously next year. And Nick Young and Wesley Johnson. And, you know, I, I really I really look forward to them carrying um, carrying a significant amount of that weight and you know easing the load. Yeah, we'll see what happens when you get on the court. Hey man, listen, I you know I I, I could sit back until June, man. Just you know I just want that jewelry. You said you plan to. Um... <laughs> You said you plan to shatter the record for the quickest recovery time from this injury. Yeah. Do you, do you think you'll be playing at the beginning of the season? Uh, I don't know if I'll be ready to you know, open at night. I, I really don't know. I mean, I know I'm really, really ahead of schedule. And, um, you know, whether I'll be ready to open at night, I don't know. But I'm, I'm planning on coming back as, you know, as soon as possible. Has A-Rod visited you in the hospital? <laughs> <laughs> he might be able to help. <laughs> no, I haven't heard from him. <laughs> what did you do while you're laid up in bed for such a long period of time? Uh, actually, I, I watched every season of Modern Family. Modern Family? <laughs> like every season, watched it, you know, a bunch of movies, uh, Disney movies, kids. You know, we all just kind of laid in the bed and just watched TV. It was like you were at home sick from school and mommy was taking care of you. Exactly. I, you know, I, I was eating in the bed and everything. So you, um, you, uh, how do you not get fat when you're in bed that much? <laughs> You'd have to roll me out. I'd be like one of those guys you see on TLC. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I, I didn't, I don't, uh, I'm, not, I'm not really a big eater. I like sweets, though. I see. You were uh, live tweeting during. Um, Thank you. Thanks. during a Lakers uh, playoff game. And I loved it. I thought it was great. But you said you would never do it again. Yeah. Is, was that your decision, or did the Lakers suggest that you never do it again? Well, and I'm, I'm, you know, yeah, with all due respect, they know I'm a little too stubborn to really tell me anything. I see. Like, you know, yes. I'm kind of going to do it anyway if I want to do so, it. So do you think they are aware of that? Um, yeah. Because I have that same inclination. If you're told to do something, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you feel yeah. like you have to do the opposite. It's not even like you just feel like it's almost as if they're taunting you. No, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't really that big a deal. I, I, you know, the, uh, the ownership didn't have a problem with it, to be honest with you. It was just um, I thought it was pretty damn cool. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it too. Um, I enjoyed when you were tweeting during your 81 point game as well. I mean, that was, you know, to look back at that and to give people that are reading your Twitter account insight into what was going through your head at that time. Yeah, that was, I mean, the, that was the first time I watched the game. That was the first time watching it. That was the first time you ever watched a game. Yeah. See, that's a big difference between uh, uh, you and I. Is if, if I were to score even eight points in a game, <laughs> It would be on an endless loop at my house. <laughs> but 81 points. Yeah, I don't know. I don't that know. is, I mean, your grandmother was there for that game. She was. She was. It was her first time ever watching me play in an NBA game. And, um, and did she think you scored 81 points every single time? No, her concern was that I was too tired after the game. Oh, really? <laughs> she was more concerned for my, for my health. Yeah. You just got back from the Philippines, right? Yeah. Did you, <laughs> did you visit Manny Pacquiao there? Um, no, I didn't see him. But you know, when when we arrived, um, you know, in our in our you know, villa, he had his entire staff there. His and staff they, was his there. His staff, like you know, his entire staff, and the chef and everything, they prepared like this full on like ten course meal. It was incredible. It was incredible, and you know, I sat there and stuffed my face. I, I, I said I was going to start my diet, but then I decided to start. So Manny it when Pacquiao I came back. sent you room service, essentially. Yeah, with the shot. I mean, it was like he set up the whole room. I mean, he just went above and beyond. Man. You stopped there on the way back from China. Yeah. You go to China every year now. Yeah. You're very popular in China. Why are you so popular in China? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I, I've been going to China for years now. I started going out in like 1998 doing camps and clinics and stuff like that. And 
I don't know. We just there's a kinda... statue of you. I believe we have a picture of the statue um, in China. Uh oh. And um, we're gonna bring it up. <laughs> that's that's. Uh, <laughs> For some reason, they they put you in Urkel shorts. Uh, that, yeah. <laughs> that's got to be strange to know that in a foreign country, a place where you don't speak the language at all, they've erected a statue of you. Yeah, I mean, especially I, I didn't even I didn't even know it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. Um, we, uh, we actually have a clip that I would like to show. Um, I don't know if, if you've seen this. You probably haven't because this uh, aired in the United States while you were in China. And this is how beloved Kobe Bryant is in his native land of China. Kobe on the second stop of his annual summer trip to China. About 25,000 screaming fans climbing trees and jamming the streets outside of a sporting goods store. <laughs> what did you do to him? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you have um, you have the number one selling jersey in China, and I think that's particularly significant because your jersey outsells Yao Ming's jersey. <laughs> and Yao Ming, I don't know if people are aware of this, is Chinese. He's actually from China. Right. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say, man. It's just, you know, I have a good time. We go out there, and they're really passionate about the game. I, I, don't, I don't know. They must love the game. <laughs> uh, by the way, the remainder of tonight's presentation will be conducted in Italian. Uh, sono stanco, siamo da qui. Andiamo a prendere un po' di linguini con bongole. <laughs> Bello, bravo, sì. Andiamo. Uh, <laughs> Do you understand what I said? Yeah, yeah, it was a poor rendition of Italian, but I Thank got you. it, though. Thank you. <laughs> that makes one of us. I got it. You, uh, you spent a lot of your childhood in Italy. Yeah. English is not your first language, right? No, no, it's, uh, actually, I'm still an absolute horrendous speller. A bad speller? You Terrible. think that is, you attribute that to learning Italian? That, I mean, that's my excuse. <laughs> well, your English is very good. I understand you perfectly. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you became a Lakers fan living in Italy. Yeah. Did they show Lakers games in Italy? Yeah, so um, at the time, my grandfather uh, used to send me tapes of Laker games because back then, you know, basketball wasn't as global as it is now. So he used to send me tapes. I used to sit, um, you know, in the living room and watch Magic and Byron and Worthy and Cap and, you know, the whole crew. And I just absolutely fell in love with the Lakers. Magic Johnson was your favorite player? Yeah. Magic Johnson said, and I think this, is, this has got to be as good as it gets, Magic Johnson said you're the greatest Laker ever. <laughs> Man, <no. laughs> what do you, um, you know, um, it's, yeah, I can't, I grew up watching him, so I learned from him. See what I mean? So the respect goes above and beyond, you know, I, I can't, I will never accept that because everything that I have, I learned from, you know, greats such as, his, such, such as himself. So, um, you know, it's just, uh, I had a chance to go to the Dodger game recently and it's, it, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I sat with him and that, that was really the first time in my 17 year NBA career that we had a chance to sit and talk and, you know, we just shared old stories, and he Is talked that about right? Bird. You, you never spent time with him. No, I never had a chance to sit down and talk like that. And there actually, you are last together. year, last year was the first time I ever spoke to Larry Bird. I, I never even met him, <laughs> which, which is strange. But how is that possible? I, we never, never crossed paths. It's never you crossed both paths. worked for the Lakers. <laughs> um, when, what was it like when your family moved from Italy to Philadelphia? I mean, was that? Uh, it was. Uh, it was. It was different. It was an adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. You had to learn to speak English, like everyone did, as well yeah. as everyone did. Yeah. Well, you had the the kind of um, 
some of the insecurities that come along with not being able to speak the language. You know what I mean? So it was like, I, I learned, <laughs> thank you, love you too. Uh, knowing how to speak English, but not understanding kind of the slang. And the some slang, of that yeah, stuff. the, the, the uh, yeah, the kind of subtleties and the yeah, intricacies. So, you know, playing basketball kind of helped bridge that gap. Did playing basketball, uh, did that help you be accepted socially by the other kids and that sort of thing? Well, I mean, a, a little bit. I mean, I, I, there, was, there was one kid, um, I, it's petty, I know, but whatever. His name is Victor, and I, I remember Victor. his name. Victor. His name is Victor. Little bastard. Whatever. And he, he, was, he was giving me a hard time about being this foreign kid and your dad's an NBA player and you think you're good, but I'm blah, 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 blah. All right. <laughs> so we, we played we played a one on one game and it was like I swear it was like a I don't know, it was like one of those like movie scenes where like we're like in a knife fight or something. It's like everybody standing around watching. Everybody standing around watching, I just devoured the poor kid and kinda you know I'm enjoying rubbing it in a little yeah. bit right now. So Victor was not the victor. Yeah, Victor had a tough day. <laughs> and he had to change his name to Loser, sadly. It was a... And then you, uh, yeah, well, and then you came to uh, California, much like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air from Philadelphia. Um, you said in the past that if you'd gone to college, you would have gone to Duke. Mm -hmm. Are they the ones that offer you the most money? <laughs> Hey, you know, um, no, uh, but <laughs> Coach K, I, I loved Coach K. Coach K was phenomenal, um, but I, I, I got to say, you know, the, the, the truth has to come out that I, I loved Duke. Um, Dean Smith sent me a letter and actually said that he was going to stop recruiting me because he believed that I was going to go pro. But if I had to make a decision, I, I probably would have wound up going to Carolina just because Really? Yeah, because because of the competition. So the year before uh, my senior, before I graduated, Vince Carter went to Carolina, and the year before he was the best guard in the country. So I'm looking. I'm saying, yo, I want to play against him every single day because I, I want to get better. I want to measure myself against these guys. You know, I want to measure myself against uh, competing against a Vince Carter, um, you know, Phelps, uh, Rashid Wallace every day. Um, that's something that I was really looking forward to doing. Wearing the same uniform that Michael Jordan wore? Yeah, no pressure there. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, who else tried to recruit you besides Duke and North Carolina? Uh, Kansas was, was, was a big one. Um, the first letter I ever received, the first college letter I ever received was from West Point. Um, Did Indiana. you consider that at all? Not really. Not really, yeah. Uh, I was just excited to get a letter. That was pretty cool. Do you um, feel like you missed out on anything uh, by not going to college, the wet t-shirt contest, the spring break? And stuff? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you, know, you miss out on that stuff, but that's the sacrifice that you, that you make. I mean, I, 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 you go to college, the way I looked at it, you go to college, you get a job. And I have a job sitting right here for me. That's, um, that's, that's challenging. You get to compete against the best. And I could just... I couldn't pass on that. Do you tell young people not to go to college? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, tell them, I tell them to follow their dreams. That's what I tell them. Do you give advice? Are you uh, the kind of guy that gives advice to people? I'm not, I'm not really the, the kind of the patient type to really sit down and give advice. Mm -hmm. you know, it's more I've like heard that about you. Gear, I've you heard know? that about you. You want to do something, do it. You give it in short bursts. Yeah. I have a photograph I'd like to share. It's a shocking photograph. I think it's going to horrify some people in this room, but uh, let's put that up on the screen if we could. This is... Um... <laughs> <laughs> this is something that would probably have been better hey, destroyed. No, listen. I, first of all, I, I hated the Celtics just as much as everybody here. So... You know, Dennis Johnson, Dennis Johnson, um, you know, uh, may you rest in peace. Dennis Johnson 
Um, when I saw him and he was going to be a part of the workout, it, I, I wanted to just annihilate him. It was just like just <laughs> Dennis Johnson from the Celtics. You know, you, I remember what you did to Coop. I remember what you did to Magic, the little elbows and all sort of stuff. I'm giving it to you right back right now. I don't care how old you are, you're going to get it right now. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I had to actually, I wound up having a good time working out for them. Um, I actually had a really good and fun workout with the Clippers. Um, I did. I did. I had a really good workout with the Clippers, and then they 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 told me, hey, this is probably too much information, but it's, no, no, it's we Kobe, can't it's Kobe possibly close, have so too much the hell. information. So I, I had a really good workout with the Clippers, and they told me they said, you know, this is the best workout we ever seen. So I'm like, oh man, I'm excited. I'm like, I'm gonna come to LA. I said, all right, so you're gonna draft me? No. No, no. That's what makes uh, them the Clippers. Well, I asked them why. I said, I asked them. I said, listen. <laughs> For me, as, as, a, as, a, as a kid in Philadelphia, you've had like the, the horrible winters. You know, I'm excited to come out to LA, and yeah. palm trees and all that, right? So I asked them, why wouldn't they draft me? They said, well, we want to turn things around um, with our organization. And we felt, like, we felt like if we drafted the 17-year-old kid, then the city of Los Angeles wouldn't take us seriously. And so they said, we can't draft you. They always make the best decisions. Oh, man, it's, dude. That was like, that but was then, so much motivation. I think, what, uh, 2004 was it that you were considering going to the Clippers? Were yeah. you really considering going to the Clippers? Yeah. You were? Yeah. Even with that stupid uniform they wear, you were going to put that on? Yeah. <laughs> I was. Isn't that like signing an endorsement deal with RC Cola? No. <laughs> 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 Uh, I mean, it was a, it was a really it was really really um, tough because it was a it was a tough period where you know Shaq had demanded a trade. Well, he just prior to him demanding a trade, and he and I just weren't going to play together anymore. Mm -hmm. it was just the the challenge was thrown down. I had to prove that I could win without him, and um, you know some, something had to give. And so I started looking at other teams as being a free agent. Um, but the purple and gold is, you know, has always been in my heart. So it was very tough for me to have to to have to look at that, you know, look at that option. Um, and fortunate, you know, fortunate for, for you made for the right me. decision. Well, I mean, it was actually it was Dr. Jerry Buss, man. He 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 had the vision, he had the confidence, he had the, you know, the belief in me to uh, to entrust his organization. Um, you know, with this young stuff. Why does kid. everybody love Dr. Buss so much? Every player you talk to uh, ha ha says the same thing, that yeah. the reason I stayed is because of Dr. Buss, and, and uh, when it comes down to it, the guy that comes in and closes the deal is Jerry Buss. Well, I mean, he was very, uh, yeah, he's D Dr. Jerry Buss, man, he was very, um, he, he knew exactly what his vision was. He had a, a very clear plan. And you sit down and you talk to him, he was very patient. Um, he was very understanding, um, and like I said, he communicated clearly. And um, for me, he, he allowed me room to grow as a person. I mean, when I first came, I was you know, 17 years old. I'm, I'll, be, uh, what, I'll be 35, I think. I don't know, 35, 36. I'll lose count after a while. Um, and he allowed me to grow and mature. You like Jerry's in general. Jerry West, also someone you were close to. Who yeah, yeah, took yeah. a chance on a, uh, a yeah. teenage a teenager. Yeah. yeah. Seventeen years old. Hey, you, uh, do you remember? By the way, you were drafted what thirteenth? Uh, Is that uh, correct? Thirteenth pick. Yeah. Do you know uh, who was drafted ahead of you? No. I suspect that you have the list of names in your head in order. Maybe a little bit. Do you? Maybe a little bit. You want but, me to go through it? Sure. <laughs> Alan Iverson, Marcus Camby, Sharif Abdul Rahim, Stefan Marbury, Ray Allen, Antoine Walker, Lorenzen Wright, Kerry Kittles, Samaki Walker, Eric Dampier, Todd Fuller, Vitaly Budapenko. <laughs> then you. You got drafted behind Vitaly. I know. I know. She'd never I, get drafted behind a Vitaly, just in I, general. 
I think the pick the pick after me was it. I think it was Steve Nash, wasn't it? Uh, I stopped at 13. Yeah, I think it was Steve. <laughs> I think it was Steve Nash. I mean, it was a. Uh, but we, it was a, I it like was the a, idea that you, you're acting like you don't know if it was Steve when I know uh, you probably remind him of this every day. <laughs> What's up, 14? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you want to play in Charlotte? Um, it wasn't much of my um, choice or option. You know, I was actually told that, you know, um, they really couldn't have used me in Charlotte because at the time they had, you know, they had a lot of guards mm -hmm. there already and they were pretty, they were doing all right and they didn't, honestly, they didn't, they didn't want me. They wanted to trade me. So that's, that's another great decision. What was it like to be a teenager with a lot of money? <laughs> uh, it was, it was cool. Do you remember your first big expenditures? Nah, not really. I, I'm not really a big, um, I wasn't big like, you know, I got to get this car or whatever. Um, I was just all about the game. The game just completely consumed me. That's how I, that, was, that was my focus 100% of the time. Is it true that when you're in high school you would show up for practice at 5 a.m. and not leave until 7 p.m.? Yeah. Do you think that's because you love basketball or because you're crazy? Both. <laughs> a little bit of both. You, you joined the Lakers the same year as Shaq. Do you remember the first time you met him? Uh, I think the first, what did we do the first time? I think we went out to dinner at Jerry's Deli in Beverly Hills. How much did he eat? And I, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world that he had a cell phone that was like this big. It was like. Shaq said that you would, he would sometimes see you practicing uh, without a ball like that crazy guy in Above the Rim. <laughs> Who taught you to practice without a ball? Dude, you can't listen to half the hell the shit that Shaq says, man. <laughs> I, I, always, I always practice with a ball. I, I love shooting too much. Of course I had a ball. I'm not going to just, I'm not doing that. You and, you and Shaquille against Jordan and Pippen, two on two. Oh, we would win, just because. And no free throws. No, 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 we would, no, we would win that. I mean, just because, you know, Shaq, you know, we, I, I joke around, I like needling Shaq a lot because it's just fun to do that. But um, the guy was an absolute force, man. Like, he, the, the stretch that from 2000 to 2003, what this guy was doing is something that, you know, you you haven't seen in the history of the game. I mean, NBA Finals averaging 40 and 15. I mean, it was like, you know, he, was doing, he was doing some pretty supernatural stuff, man. And so that matchup just wouldn't, just wouldn't work out just because of him. You and Shaq won three titles together. Which was your favorite of those? Well, yeah. Um, yeah, it's gotta, be, it's gotta be number two. It's gotta be number two. Um, it still eats a little bit at all of us. I'm sure Robert, you know, Robert's in here somewhere. It probably still eats away at him a little bit too because we should have went undefeated in the playoffs that year. We should have went undefeated. And it's, it bothers us. It still bothers us to this day that we let that game one drop. <laughs> that is funny. You won and you're still upset. <laughs> Listen, man, you, you know, yeah. We already established I'm a little off. Yeah. A little you off. went to uh, Michael, Jack uh, Michael Jordan's, <laughs> Michael Jackson's. Um, you went to the Neverland Ranch recently. No, you, um, <laughs> you were at Michael Jordan's 50th birthday party. No. Yeah. Did you bring him a gift? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> There's nothing you can give him. No. No, what I'm going to give him. Um, what's your relationship like with Michael? It's fantastic. I mean, it's, uh, you know, a big brother type of relationship. Is he? Does he? Does he give you advice? Yeah, he does actually. Yeah. Good advice. Great advice. I mean, I, I'll never, I'll never ever, well, I'll never ever ever um, say that. I mean, I, him and Magic and those guys, and you know, Michael in particular, has really given me phenomenal advice in how to take a team, uh, particularly with the personalities that <laughs> that we have. 
and how to better communicate with your teammates, how to better elevate your teammates. What player in your career did you learn the most from? Oh, Michael. Michael. For sure. Even though you never played together. For sure. Wow. Who's the toughest guy you ever played against? Toughest guy I ever played against. Depends. It, it's uh, I can go by I can go by errors actually. So <laughs> so uh, there's a, there's a stretch. There I didn't where, ask you guys. I asked him. <laughs> it, there there was a stretch where uh, Allen Iverson was just really. I mean he was. He was a load to deal with, man. He was really, really tough. And there was a game where he dropped 44 on me in Philadelphia. There was a game in New Jersey where Marbury dropped 50 on me. There was a game where Arenas had 60. Uh, Do I Carmelo, hear 70? Carmelo Anthony is always tough for me to deal with. You know, Durant's always tough uh, to deal with. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's a lot of guys, but the guy that always gave me the most problems actually was Tracy McGrady. Tracy McGrady? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tracy something McGrady, about the... man. Tracy McGrady with his, you know, he, he had all the skills and all the athleticism, um, but he was 6'9", and he was really, really tough to figure out. We are, uh, we're going to take a quick break here, but I have a lot to ask you. Um, we're here tonight for a good cause, Kobe and Vanessa's foundation to end homelessness. And uh, thank you all for coming. We'll be right back with Kobe Bryant up close. Well, we are here at the Nokia Theater. Uh, we've got a full house on hand for Kobe Bryant up close. We're back on the air, everybody. So um, again, this is this whole event is here, is put together because um, of your efforts against you. Tr you want to kill homelessness, yes, right. yes, right. and um, and thanks to everyone for being here. Um, and I know we are here tonight to try to end homelessness, but if there's only one to be only one homeless person in the world, um, would you be happy if that was Dwight Howard? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> He's a Dwight. Dwight's a great kid, man. No, he Dwight is, is not a great, great guy. <laughs> I'll speak for it. I'll speak on your behalf. Uh, hey, listen, I, if one thing you guys know about me is I have absolutely no filter, and I have no problem saying what the hell I feel. So, he's actually a good kid. He's a good kid. You know, we 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 have different perspectives on what it takes to win and what it takes to be successful. And because of that, we obviously had times we didn't see eye to eye. But, you know, it is what it is. You were part of a, a group of people that the Lakers put together, assembled to come in and to talk to Dwight to try to convince him to stay in Los Angeles. Yeah. But, uh, you know, knowing you, I, I wonder, it, it, at that point, knowing you have to convince someone to stay and play with you, do you write them off at that point? I mean, at that point, do you go, hey, I don't want this guy on my team if I have to convince him to be here? <laughs> you know, it's, it wasn't, it's not about, it wasn't about me. It was about the organization. It's about the organization. It's about, you know, everything that they've done for me throughout my career. And it's about me trying to help them out in any way I can to set them up for the future and for, for when I retire. What not about me. When you got injured, Dwight said, and this is a quote, now with Kobe out, I understand that I have to do more and be more for this team. This is a great opportunity for me. This is a great opportunity. So there's no need to get down about it. This is a great opportunity for us to do something special and make believers out of everybody. He saw your injury as a great opportunity. Did that? <laughs> <laughs> Did that bother you at the time? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it no. didn't. No, it didn't. I, you know, it's, it's, 
Um, I understand um, that philosophy, and you're trying to, you know, stay positive and motivate the guys. I, I have absolutely no problems with that. You, because you at one time maybe felt like people said, "Oh, you only win because Shaq is your teammate," and then that drove now, you, know, you to. I never, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I never cared about when other people said that. It never bothered me that people said, "Well, you only win championships because you're playing with Shaq." It bothered me when he said it. You understand? So when he said it, I said, okay, you know what? That's it. Because you know what time it is. But you told us yourself <laughs> that you shouldn't listen to what Shaq says. <laughs> you said you wanted to be a Laker for life. But the Lakers, well, we all know the situation. They might be trying to clear cap space to potentially lure someone like LeBron and or Carmelo Anthony. <laughs> Are you certain that you will be a Laker for life? Yeah. Phil, um, Phil Jackson, another guy you've, you've had a kind of an up and down relationship with, and I think it's up now, right? I love Phil. Phil said, wrote that you were, um, he said that your philosophy was give me the damn ball, but at a certain point, you, that changed. You started taking your teammates to dinner. You started socializing with them and treating them like partners. Was, was that a conscious decision you made, or did that yeah, just happen? It was, it, was, it was part of the evolution of understanding um, you know, what it takes to enhance the group around you. You know, I was a person that was completely consumed with my craft. And, and you know, I, I got to a point in my career where I had to kind of take a step back and start looking outwardly and not looking, you know, internally of how to make improvements, but start looking at others and saying, okay, how can I make him better? How can I improve him? What's he going through, et cetera, et cetera. And that, you know, that, that came from, you know, Phil's direction. And you, do you feel like your, your philosophy as a leader has changed significantly over the years? Um, yeah, it, it has actually. I, I, you know, my demeanor and my temper probably, probably calm down maybe a little bit, but uh, <laughs> just kind of how I view things and how I perceive things, are, it, it's different. It's different. You know, I go into games now, um, you know, when I made that, that adjustment, looking at, um, you know, what are my guys going through? You know, who's struggling? What can I do to help? And sometimes that might take me out of rhythm of the game, but that's fine because I, you know, that's I'd rather me have to try to go through that uphill struggle um, as opposed to my teammates having to do it. Will you miss Metal World Peace? Tremendously. You, I really like him. I mean, not I mean, he's still around, I guess. But uh, it, it, what's the funniest thing you ever saw him do? <laughs> Uh, what's the funniest thing I've ever seen Meta do? Man, he's done anything like, funny. He's done some pretty weird, seems some pretty weird stuff. Uh, didn't you, didn't you, I, I seem to recall you telling me you met him in the shower. Well, that's kind of what I was alluding to. Oh, I see. You know, it was after we, we got beat by the Celtics uh, <laughs> in 2008 in the finals. And I, you know, I'm in the shower and I'm, I'm, pissed beyond belief and I'm just standing there I'm like in the shower for like an hour and I just hear yo yo Cole I turn around and I'm standing in the shower and he's standing there and he says this ain't gonna happen no more I'm gonna come and I'm gonna help you and we're gonna win and this is not gonna happen I'm gonna have your back and I was like <laughs> you know like, damn, man, we could, like, hug it out right now, but n not really. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Who is the funniest guy you ever played with? Uh, Shaq. Shaq and Gary Payton, Shaq, by yeah. far. By uh, far. Who's the smelliest player you ever played with? Uh, Brian Grant, because of his dreads. <laughs> the dreads. If you could pick one, uh, one player to join you on the Lakers, anybody, who would you pick? Oh, I, 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 I'd take Derek Fisher back. Derek Fisher. That's, that's my guy, man. That's like, you know, 
we came in this thing together. You know, we, we, we won five titles together. I mean, that's like... Even though he's 70 years old? Well, shit, man, I'm 65. <laughs> Do you think Chris Paul should be a Laker right now? Uh, legally speaking, yeah. He yeah. Should be, yeah. David Stern speaking, no. He's gonna love that one. <laughs> He's gonna, I, I thought he actually. I thought it was. Uh, you know, I, I was working out. I was lifting weights, getting ready, and you know, Chris called me and told me he was coming. You know, and said it was a done deal, and I was like, all right, well, cool. You know, I, I was. Um, it was kind of mixed reactions because you're losing teammates, you know, and Powell and Lamar, you know, so it's tough. Um, then he calls me back like 30 minutes later and said, man, you won't believe it. I said, what? Said, David Stern killed the deal, man. That's some bull. Blah, blah, blah. You know, and then it kind of went from there, and then he ended up in L.A. anyway, so. Yeah. Close, but no cigar, I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> On a, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much does it bother you when the Lakers try to trade Pau Gasol? <laughs> it seems like it bothers you a lot. It does. It does. It, um, yeah, it's, uh, let me see how I can, how can I put this. So the, the, we, we had a stretch where we won championships with, you know, Pau anchoring the offense for us, you know. And then we went through a stretch where, you know, we had Andrew developing, so we try to work him into things. We had Dwight come, try to work him into things. And through that process, through that process, everybody forgot how we won in the first place. So, right, you know, so Powell's in a tough spot because everybody's asking him and wanting to see more from him, but he's not getting the same opportunities that he was getting before. So, you know, you can't have it both ways, man. Yeah, well, that makes sense, yeah. And, but he's still with you, and that's good. Yeah. Yep. You, um, what's your favorite basketball movie? Uh, the Fish That Say Pittsburgh. <laughs> the Fish That Say Pittsburgh? Nobody here probably knows. That movie's a cult classic, man. <laughs> you guys got to get movie. up on that. You know, He's from Pittsburgh. Dr. J with the afro. You, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And then, you know, the conventional ones. You know, the are, Hoosiers, you, uh, you know. are you planning to write a book anytime soon? I might as well. Everybody else write books about me. Damn. <laughs> might as well write one about myself. I swear, I keep telling Phil, Phil, you might have to cut me in on a royalty or something. Hey, really? Yeah. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Do you know what it will be called? Have you thought about the title of the book? I might as well just call it Phil. Just call it <laughs> Phil? <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you turn 35 next week. You've accomplished a lot, obviously. What are you most proud of what, what, uh, that you've accomplished? Man, it's, 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 it's tough. It's been a, um, it's been a um, long career, you know, 17 years. It's hard to, to, to pinpoint in my professional career the things that I'm most proud of. Um, I think it's fun. No, it's definitely not over, but it, it, it's fun to kind of challenge, um, you know, from a 17-year-old kid and, and kind of challenge um, what's normal or what the system was. You know, that, that's, that was pretty cool. You uh, need less than 7,000 points to break Kareem's all-time scoring record. Is that important to you? No, you know, it's never, I've never given that thought. It was never something that, um, you know, it was a goal of mine growing up. It's not a goal now. I, I, you know, people don't really understand how obsessed I am with winning. It's not, I don't care about anything else on a basketball court but winning. Well, that's why I wonder is everyone knows how competitive you are. What, how will you handle it when you retire? I mean, you're going to need serious therapy. <laughs> Do you even have hobbies? Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> no, coach, you pitching me coaching? My God, no. Is that something you'd be interested in <laughs> no, coaching? No, 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 no. What no, about no. owning a team? Uh, if, if, if the Lakers want to sell you the team? You know, if they if they if they if they want to break me off a little something something, I'll, I'll, I you know, I'll definitely jump at that. Do you think the Lakers will uh, make the playoffs this year? 
No, nah, I, 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 I think we'll finish 12. All right. We have some questions from the audience. The first one comes from uh, Jerry Trevino. Jerry, where are you, Jerry? Jerry, uh, go ahead and ask your question. Look at how muscular Jerry is. Why, uh, my goodness. <laughs> the U.S. Marine, that's why. Nah. Um, Mr. 81, my question to you is, of all your nicknames, which one is your favorite and why? <laughs> it's like Mamba, Vino. Um, I like right now, I, I, like, I like Vino right you now. You like Vino right now? Like Vino, Vino right is now. a great nickname. Yeah, Black Black Mama's like you know that I, I I enjoy that obviously, and that's that's the that's the alter ego I turn into when I step on the court. Next question is from uh, Mariella Maron. Mariella, Hi, Kobe. how are you? Good, thank you. Just wanted to start off by saying me and my cousin love you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you, Vanessa, for upgrading our seats. <laughs> Um, my question to you is, what do you think about ESPN stating that the Lakers are going to be in 12th place on the Western Conference this season? Wow. I, well, I mean, you know, ESPN gets stuff wrong all the time. I mean, it's, you know, so, but I, I, I think it's interesting. I, I use it as motivation. I use it as fuel. I'm sure we all do on the team. It's, it's, it's. You know, last year they, they picked us to be the favorites and they were wrong about that. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe they're wrong about the 12th. <laughs> Tracy, you have a question. Hi, Kobe. Whenever I think I can't achieve a goal, I think WWKD, what would Kobe do? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so my question is, um, could you please share your secret? You have the most amazing ability to rise up quickly and bounce back from any emotional or psychological adversity. You just bounce back right away. The rest of us would crumble. And simultaneously, you stay in the moment all the time. How? <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask really quickly? Uh, why, do you, why do you want to know this? Are you having emotional problems? Yes. Yeah, Kobe, help her, please. I think the the the, um, <laughs> the the there's no real there's no real trick to it. It's all really just to me. It's it's, it's um, it seems very simple because you know when, when you you have a situation and you're struggling or you're going through something and then you step on a basketball court or you're, you're, you're faced with that you know with the fight or flight option. You, know, you, you, you have a choice to make, and to me, it's it's a very easy choice. I'm not I'm not going to fold. I'm not going to, you know, crawl up in the ball. I'm not. I'm just not going to do that. So you know, you 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 can either let the situation continue to affect you, or you can win at something. <laughs> so if you're struggling in this area, you don't want to struggle in this area too. You know, so you want to, you know, try to compartmentalize your emotions and focus on what you're doing at that moment in time. And um, you'll find that when you do that, it, 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 it brings peace to other aspects of your life as well. There you go. <laughs> we have, uh, <laughs> agreed. We have um, Hussein. Uh, Hussein, is that your name? Yep. It's not Saddam Hussein. Why is Hussein getting booed? Yeah, I think he has his arms crossed. I think he has a Dwight Howard oh. jersey on. You're saying, why are you getting booed? <laughs> oh. He did exit out. <laughs> he, got, he, got, he got that on sale. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> that should be a refund item at the Lakers store. <laughs> that was 90% off. What is, uh, what is your question? What's up, Kobe? What's up, Jimmy? What's I was up? just wondering, who's the next Kobe Bryant? Who's the next Kobe Bryant? Um. <laughs> is there a, is yeah, there a well, young player you have your eye on? The, well, the, there's several. I mean, the, the problem is that, you know, with the, the guys that I, I'm, I'm facing now all grew up watching me, so they all have the same attitude and temperament, and, you know, so it's, uh, but the guys that I really enjoy, uh, I, I really enjoy Westbrook. I really enjoy James Harden and uh, and Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving, man, this guy, you know. But they all they all 
have that that gene. You know, they're all extremely ultra competitive and stubborn. And um, Nick Young also. I, Nick Young's actually given me some pretty big numbers <laughs> in the past. It's like every time I was guarding this guy, the guy wouldn't miss. Have you ever wound up playing against somebody that at one time was a kid in one of your camps? Not, well, I played against Westbrook when he was a senior in high school. Oh, okay. And I remember thinking, this, this kid, I mean, he wasn't scared at all. I mean, he was like getting after it. You know, the same Russell that you see now. I mean, he was the same way back then. And, um, and you can see the, you know, see the potential. Uh, we have a question here from this gentleman. His name is Mark. Hey, Kobe, what's up? Thanks for doing this, man. I'm asking this question for my son, Richie, who's sick at home, couldn't make it tonight. If you had to win one game to save your life, and you could pick any five players all time, whoever, would be on that team, could include you, could include anybody, who would you pick? Oh. Um, well, it seems like you should be on the team. No, I'll, I'll, I'll he take, really has no role in this. No, I'll take, I'll take, I'll take myself out of it. I, I, I'd, I'd pick uh, Magic, Michael, um, Bird, Russell, and Kareem. Wow. So we have uh, another question from uh, the audience. <laughs> yes, um, yes, what is, what is your name, young man? My name's Terrell. Mm -hmm. Terrell. Yes, you have a question from Mr. Bryan? <laughs> Kobe, I, I, have two, I have two questions. Obviously, I, with the injury that you've sustained, undoubtedly one of the most difficult to come back from. Can you share with the audience and the million people that are watching today how cutting edge technology and science has played a big part in your recovery? Obviously, you're well ahead of, of, of what you're doing right now. So can you just share with the, the audience what that has done for you and what you're going through right now? I think Terrell's looking for a doctor's appointment. <laughs> <laughs> well, you no. know, we, we, we have, we actually, there is a, a, a neuromuscular therapist um, that we share. This guy is like one of those um, genius kind of guys, man. It just knows the human anatomy inside and out. His name is Baron Spados. And, um, I, I've been working with him for years. And, um, but yeah, I mean, the, the procedure was, I was very fortunate. We went and did the surgery the next day instead of waiting and letting the scar tissue develop. And, um, we we're very aggressive with the therapy, um, you know, um, three weeks maybe after the surgery, we got right to it. So, um, that, I mean, that's, that's helped a lot. And, and Jimmy, just to let you know, with this type of technology and research, especially obviously you think about stem cell research, uh, Regenokine, uh, cryotherapy, these are a lot of things that a lot of people don't know. These are not PEDs, by the way. These are not performance enhancing drugs. Um, these are things that actually to allow guys to get back to their perfected craft on the field, on the court, in a faster manner than just regular ice and stem that you know traditionally you know practice throughout a lot of the colleges, uh, high schools, and things of that nature. So, like you said, we share a, a mutual friend in Barron's Betos, and so this is some of the things. Like I came back from an ACL injury, obviously getting back on the field, running in like six and a half, seven months. These are some of the things that now a lot of athletes are flying across the country. To, to get those treatments, yeah. but see, you know what though? That's yeah. but that's but that's interesting Save though because it for like the grand jury, to I don't. Nah, you know it's it's, it's interesting <laughs> because because he, he's touching on something that uh, it might not be a you know a sexy topic for everybody here to listen to. Right. Yeah. That's a critical part because you guys want to win a six championship. You got to understand that the recovery things that I do, this stuff. I mean, it's cutting edge. I mean, it's it's you have to be obsessive about the process. You know, you have to be at it all the time. I mean, he, he came back from a hell of a ankle injury for my dear and beloved Eagles in the Super Bowl and gave it a great effort. And, you know, but it, it's, it's, it's the, the, the recovery component is something that it's, it's beyond important for, for us athletes. Well, thank God for, for me these in particular. doctors, yeah. yeah no, thank that, you, Tio. <laughs> no, we I, only have have one. I, have, I have another question, James. Well, we only, have, on. we only have 40 <laughs> seconds left. Okay, my next question <laughs> is how is Vanessa and the kids? Oh, it's good, good. V's it's right there. V's here chilling, and uh, our kids are good, and uh, you know they're playing sports in insanely, insanely 
competitive. And uh, but we're, we're doing. Kobe, I'm, great, man. I'm sure they're keeping Thank you. Thank you for doing this. I, I think we. I, I enjoyed talking to you. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope that um, Kobe and Vanessa Bryant. Family Foundation uh, is a great charity, and thank you all for contributing to it, and thanks to all the sponsors, and thank you. Kobe thank you. Bryant, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we'll wait, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.